Good morning. How's everyone on Saturday? What day is it? January the 21st. My goodness, the month is almost gone. Cheers. Welcome to Bailey's and Tea Saturday with me, Shanna. I am the creative coach and designer with Carrot Tops Creative Co. And I'm also an independent stamping up demonstrator from Edmonton, Alberta. So as you hop on, I know I'm a minute early because I'm just making sure that this is all working this week. So as you hop on, say good morning. Let me know who's joining me. And I will get this up on my computer so we can chat. And I'm not seeing it again. Oh, Facebook, you're driving me. Hmm. I'm not seeing it. Hopefully you're finding me. Oh, maybe this is me. No, that's last week's. Oh, this is so frustrating. You know, when you get things down pat and then they switch things up on you. I don't know what's going on, friends. Let me see if my iPad will find it. I'm going to flip you around to my desk here, too, in just two seconds. Oops. I'm in a couple of events here, so I've got multiple devices doing multiple things. Um... Okay, I'll switch you around to my desktop and then we'll try and find the feed. If you get dizzy, look away for a moment. I don't know, friends. This is getting frustrated. Frustrating, I mean. Okay, so you'll see on my desk that I've got, obviously, celebration, because that is going on right now. And... You can, with every $60 or $120 order, you can order fun products. So this ha beautiful happy set that you see here is from the 120 level. So we call it level two. And, nope, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get a feed again. I don't know. I don't know how to fix it. Um, and then here I've used, this is a card we're going to make today. I have used this Dainty Flowers 12 by 12 designer series paper. Now I will say that I wasn't a fan of it, um, but I wanted to order it so that I could challenge myself to play with it. And I think I did okay. I think you'll like what you what I've created. Oh, I am live in my event. I don't know, it's changed. I don't know what it's doing, Glenda. Thank you for confirming that I'm alive somewhere in the internet. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I don't know how to fix it, but we'll, we'll deal with that later. So yeah, so I was challenged with this paper because I don't know, it's too florally for me, but it's got some great backsides to it. So let's have a quick peek at it. So we've got some blushing bride, some crush curry, some fresh freesia, obviously on this sheet. Uh, mossy meadow old olive so i love this so this is what i cut out to make the card we're going to make today obviously and it's got some great borders this is great for scrapbooking you could um oval cut the middle out and um put your picture in there or use it on the card front like we're going to use today so some great options there and i love this this is a great um, background piece so if you if you're not totally particular on all the floral the back sides are fantastic and a little bit more subdue uh, this one I love as well great card fronts or you can use it for scrapbook pages so I did make a scrapbook page that I'm going to show you And then this one is quite nice. It's quite subdued as well. And then some great fun polka dots on the back side. And then this gorgeous one here with another sheet that's kind of blended splattered paint, which is really fun. So once I got the paper and saw it, of course I changed my mind, right? Isn't that what we all do? 
So here is the card we're going to create today. Yeah, unfortunately, Glenda, you're the only one that can see me. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. So let's get started. So I've got a little kit here. I've prepped some things. And now I'm getting a reminder to start my live. I don't know what this thing is doing. Craziness. So I've got a a thick um, white card base, uh, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And then I've got an envelope so that I finish my card. I have got some of the designer paper, so it's the one I used on my scrapbook page that I'm going to show you in a bit. Um, cut down to two, um, five by three and five eighths. So that's just going to layer there. And then this one took a little bit of finagling to get it to the size that I wanted. But basically you're going to cut as close to, I cut that one off just a smidge, but cut as close to the actual oval as you can. So the finished size is 3 and 7 sixteenths by 4 and 5 eighths. And it's just going to layer on top of this green piece and look very, very pretty. And then the gorgeous, you must have these. The framed florets dies have some great dies for um, doing frames in them. So there's another one there. So these are gorgeous. So what I've done is I've sort of double cut um, the oval one. So originally you will get something that looks like this, but I wanted the fresh freesia border. I actually had these on my desk in a little scrap bowl from a previous project so I like to kind of use up that scrap bowl every now and again so I just gather up pieces but if you didn't have the scrap you'll want to cut one in fresh freesia and then one in white so that you can use the oval from the white to layer in that and then you can use that oval for another um, piece and then from your cut of the oval you'll use sort of your little scrap piece for stamping your flowers from the beautifully happy set and then our greeting also came from there as well so we're kind of blending two of the celebration products together so that we get use out of them, of course. So we're going to bring in our Blushing Bride uh, ink. I've got our stamps mounted already. We've got some Memento Black as well. And then I've got the Old Olive um, Light Blend, a Crush Curry marker and a Blushing Bride marker. So what we'll do is we'll take our memento and the floral. That's okay, Glenda. I'll keep going and hopefully I can find it after like last week when I had to hunt high and low. Somebody like it in my event and then I'll be able to find it because that's what happened last week. Cause I couldn't find it otherwise. So if you like it in the event, Glenda, you'll be the only one in there. So you go ahead and do that for me. <laughs> and then I can uh, post it into the page. So then I'm taking the blushing bride and the filler inner stamp. I call it probably not a technical term, but, and just go ahead and fill those in. So that's the great thing about this stamp set is all of these darker images will fill in either the small flower into these uh, lovely flowers here um, or the, the greenery. So it's an awesome stamp set, I love it. And then I will take, sorry, my pad is very, very stiff. Oh, goodness me. Oh, and it just made a big mess in my hand, hang on. The ink is squirting out the front of it. I think I need a new stamp pad. Let me just wipe my hand real quick so I don't get blushing bride ink everywhere. Okay, and then we'll come in with our light old olive and I just colored the little stem part. Now I've already pre-done and pre-cut all of these out to save some time. Blushing bride marker. And I just dab with my brush end. My markers are quite old, so they are drying out a little bit. 
And I find if I dab, it doesn't break down the ends of my brush tips very harshly. So that's our flowers, nice and colored. Oh, okay. Well, aren't you the clever one today? You're the star student, Glenda. <laughs> I've never, I've never had a problem starting it in my event and not being able to uh, get it on my page. Like, I, I, this is something new with Facebook, you know? It's always got to challenge us. Like, we don't have enough issues in our world. Us as creators here, we just want to create and show you and not have any issues, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bomb bug to Facebook. So I fussy cut them out because unfortunately these do not have a set of dies. So I've just gone nice and close to the image so that I can um, layer them on. So we'll bring in our sentiment. Now it's got some beautiful ones. Um, on the original I did for, for a feeling better kind of day. There's sending happy thoughts for a very happy birthday. Kindness matters. You're easy to love and thank you. So whichever you want. I think I'm going to make this one a birthday one. So I've got some birthdays coming up and always need a card for that. And I'm just going to take that off. And then I'm going to come in with my memento as soon as I find it. Here it is. I'm still not used to, I did a bit of rearranging. I think whoever tuned in last week and saw, or if you could get on or you watched the replay, hopefully you watched the replay. Um, I did some rearranging in my office and um, now I can't find anything. So it's totally throwing me off. So now we're just gonna quickly layer. This is a simple card. It's not complicated, just a few layers. Using up this designer series paper because it is quite beautiful. Or if you don't like it, you'll get it out of your craft room and you won't have to think about it. I am prepared with another refill of seal here. This is my camera one, so I don't check this one all the time, but I had one in the drawer. There we go. And we'll just seal this down. And you can kind of, it kind of goes either way. So you can decide sort of where you want um, certain flowers. There's no rhyme or reason to this wreath. It's quite gorgeous. You could even do your card this way. And um, you just have to change the orientation of your sentiment. It'll work either way. It's, it's a gorgeous um, wreath. And then we need a bit of Tombow multi glue to glue this down so just some dots around not too much or your glue will smush out everywhere and make a mess and you don't want that and it's just going to layer over this wreath so you are going to cover up some of the flowers but that's okay because you want them sort of sticking out the sides and then I use dimensionals on back side of my oval and so the beautiful thing when I first got the paper and I was trying to decide what in the heck I was going to do with it um, I looked at a few of our other sets now there is a stamp set in the catalog the new mini that goes with this but oh I have so many florals that I decided nope I'm not going to get that one which one would pair up beautifully out of the annual catalog with it and so when I went on a search, I found that Honeybee Home and the Blessings of Home would match up quite nice with this. So I'll show you a sample in a minute here, as soon as we finish up our card, that has the Honeybee Home and this paper paired up. So I've got some mini dimensionals on the back of my little flowers. Sorry, I'm just getting a message here and I'm not sure what it is. Um, and layer these in. I needed my take your pick tool to get those off. And I just kind of shot this one in behind to kind of layer them up. And then I actually trimmed off the end of this 
stem just a little bit so that I could tuck it in behind the other one. And it would kind of look like it's a double flower. So you'll see I trimmed it off and kind of bumped it up against that one. And then uh, it looks like they're kind of coming out of the same stem. Little cheater trick. Oops, and I cut off, sorry. I cut off this little. This little, um, I don't know what you call it, little bulb that was on the end, I cut that off as well. And I'm gonna have to cut it just a bit more. There we go. And make sure that I'm not covering my sentiment because I stamped it over a little too much. Keep your sentiment sort of to the left here a little so that you have some room. All right, and there is that done. Pretty, right? And then there's Wink Costello on the flowers, but as usual, the camera has a really hard time catching that. And I brought in my champagne rhinestones because I just thought they look quite pretty with this. But you will want to be using up your um, 2021, 20, I think it was, and 20 to 2023 in colors which fresh freesia is one of those colors and then you've got the soft succulent evening evergreen um, polished pink and pale papaya you want to be using those up they're going to retire in may and you don't want to have those hanging around so also the gems that went with that would look really nice if you have those i'm not going to worry about the envelope i will stamp it later trust me so that's our card that's the two different versions. I did switch the wreath on this one from the way I did it on that one, but uh, very similar and very pretty using up that paper. Do you love it? Do you love it? Give it some hearts and tell me what you think. So here's another one that I did using um, the purpley paper that's in there. And then you'll see here, that's where I brought in that Honey Bee Home set from the annual catalog. And it looks absolutely gorgeous. And I've just kept with the purple theme using the Blackberry Bliss, sorry, and the Fresh Freesia. Just colored the flowers in with my blends and um, used those fun new um, opaque adhesive gems, which are in the mini and they're gorgeous and just brought those in. And so of course I'm using up my Fresh Freesia products so that I don't have them hanging around when they retire because I'm trying to be smart about things. <laughs> then I've got this one. This was a case from um, Jamie Babarsi. She did this one. I did mine in different colors. Um, I can't remember what she did hers in, but I thought it was gorgeous and it's just very, very pretty. So it's using this, this big image from the Beautifully Happy and then of course the filler in her images. Uh, very simple very quick and easy to do to mass produce these so gorgeous as well and then here's a fun one so it's kind of just half cutting off that end and then I've just layered some of the paper and trimmed around one side of my flower and then put that on on the edge and then that little um, bunch of flowers came from the honeybeam home as well so this one here just created a little edge and i think it's quite pretty this one i really this one i started with and really struggled so then i moved on to the others and then i came back to this one and it just came together and i quite like it and then this is just i don't know where this um shape is from i didn't go looking for it um it was in my little scrap bin that i have on my my desk so trying to use up those and then um, I'm getting back into scrapbooking. I don't know if any of you are scrapbookers, but um, I created this page with that lovely designer series paper that we saw that had the flowers on both sides. Let me just find the sheet here. And I love it. I love how it turned out. Here it is. So this one here. So you could actually create two different pages if you wanted to. Um, yeah, and then I just brought in, this is retired, um, shimmer paper, but I have a lot of retired stuff, so I like to bring it in. Just some polka dots, let's see if the camera will pick that up, just to, um, sort of decorate the background. 
And then of course that fresh freesia shimmer paper as well. And then this is very retired, but this is just my backdrop for my flower or for my photo of whatever I put in. Like I said last week, I like to create um, pages and then do pictures later or just sit down and just do a bunch of stuff all the, all the time. Um, great idea, Kathy, and hello. Double page spread, that would be a wonderful idea. Yep. Um, you do, I did fussy cut all around these flowers. I mean, I'm sure you can see that, but um, it didn't take me too long. So I think it turned out pretty nice. So that's what I have to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. I will be back next. Oh no, I will not be on next week. Um, I'm doing a retreat with Glenda, who's on today. Um, with the playing in the rain retreat so if you've signed up for that I will see you next week at that and I'll be back the week after and we'll already be into February can you believe it um, but we'll do some fun stuff for that I can't remember what I'd planned to do with it um, but it'll be fun I promise and if you have not signed up speaking of playing in the rain if you are not a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, uh, this might be one that you want to get in on this month. It pairs up with the Playing in the Rain. So if you're in Glenda and I's retreat, you will have um, a kit to go with the products that you're getting in that class for more ideas. So, And then it's got an add-on for $8.25. You get this little frog and flower dies. So this is a great kit. February 10th is the cutoff for that. So... Um, you'll want to let me know or get onto my website and sign up for that. And you will love it, I promise. Paper Pumpkin is a lot of fun. I don't get them all, so you don't see uh, everything. I have so much stuff, it's ridiculous. So I try to hold back on some things. But um, the kits that I don't get, you'll find out on the internet of people doing different things with them. And um, it's amazing. I think Glenda gets all of the kits, so she does amazing things with hers. And um, you'll be able to see what um, they have to offer but they're lots of fun if you're just getting started then um, they're perfect because everything is in the box and you just go ahead and create so like i say that's it if you have any questions please reach out i am here to help in any way and uh, i'm off to do some more fun event stuff and i will see those of you that are participating next weekend at the playing in the rain retreat glenda and i are so excited all right, take care, paper hugs.